calling Starbucks Coffee Company. We are here to help. Pour continuer en français, appuyez sur le 2. Para continuar en español, oprima 3. If you are calling about a Starbucks card or Starbucks rewards program, press 1. For questions or feedback about one of our stores, our products, or our company, press 2. By the way, you can always press 9 to return to the main menu at any time during this call. To repeat this menu, press star. This call may be recorded for quality purposes. Please hold while we transfer you to the next available representative. If you would like to chat with us online, press 1 now and we'll text you a link. Message and data rates may apply. <clears throat> Starbucks. My name is Christopher. To better assist you, can I get your email address attached to the Starbucks account? Uh, yes, sir. It is. So, by chance, you have your Starbucks card with you? I certainly do. Can I get the 16 digit number? I can look it up easier that way because that one's not coming up. All right. Um... It's in my pocket. Let me pull it out. Oh, God, it's not in that pocket. I better not have misplaced it. Um, ah, oh, there it is. Front and center. Um, there is none on the front of the card, but there's one on the back. The I'm number... Sorry, what was that? There is a number on the back. I'm going to give that to you. Um, I know I need the 16 digit number on the front. Well, it, it's a braille card, um, so on the front it doesn't have any numbers, they're printed on the back. Okay. Okay. So the number is... Could you identify your first and last name? Um, my first name is Sean, S-H-A-W-N. My last name is Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. Perfect, thank you. And how can I assist you today? Um, well, I got a few things to address this morning. Um, I've been a, a Starbucks customer since 1993. Um, I was actually, my very first store was your very first store. Um, I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and there's a store on 2111 Central. Cheyenne, Wyoming, and um, I'm also a, a long-time uh, human rights and civil rights activist. Um, there was an incident about a month and a half ago where Miss Gracie, the store manager at the time, um, it was her last day, and uh, the night before, my vehicle had run out of gas, and I had to wait until the next day to get gasoline. Um, according to the laws, they have to have a 911 call in order to come and harass me. The police do. And uh, they did not follow those protocols. But also, um, I had gotten uh, written permission from one of the Starbucks employees because she knew that my vehicle was broken down. Um, so... Um, so hold on just really quick so I just want to make sure I'm getting this right so they came the police came and arrested you you said no sir no sir they just came and harassed me but there was an incident this morning that was related to that um, as a, a result of that um, uh, Maggie is the lady who the night before she wrote me a letter giving me permission to stay the night sir I'm sorry you're phone's really muffled, so I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, so Maggie gave me permission to stay for the night, and she gave me written permission um, just because I was stranded. Um, but due to that incident, uh, and since Gracie was leaving, um, there were several employees that I spoke to about it. They uh, gave me permission. They said that if Starbucks is closed. I'm free to use the the front patio and um, I was also told that um, 
it's actually all right. They can't call 911 on me if I have to stay the night, but I haven't stayed the night there since that night. Um, but I have two phones that are identical, and one of them uh, is two hours ahead. So instead of showing up this morning um, when they were open, which is 5 a.m., I showed up just a few minutes early, about give or take about 20 minutes, I suppose. Um, Anyway, there was uh, um, multiple employees, uh, Christian being one of them, Austin, uh, Maggie, um, who else, um, Priscilla, uh, Lexi, um, quite a few employees, uh, almost all of them actually, had told me that the Starbucks policy is that they don't call 911 unless it's an emergency. Um, they also said that if uh, I show up early, it's fine. If I show up a little bit late, it's fine. And I always let them know if I'm going to be staying late because I use the internet from outside. And I do it from inside my vehicle. Now, last night I, I left early um, because there were no other customers. And I wanted them to be able to get their cleanup done. Um, however, this morning when I showed up... Um, I was surprised to find that there were three officers who pulled up behind me and they threatened to break my window and arrest me and were basically very rude and inconsiderate. And I, I was very unhappy with these officers um, until I found out that uh, those officers had been called. Now, the officers told me that uh, one of the employees had called 911 and told them that I had been sleeping there overnight every night and that I had been warned not to sleep there overnight and a few other things. And he cited uh, Christian as being someone who had warned me not to do that. Well, Christian was one of the people who had given me permission. Almost all of the Starbucks employee had given me permission. I wanted to make sure there wasn't a comfort issue associated with it. Um, okay. However... And, and I'm I, I don't want to cut you off, really, but I just want to let you know I'm going to have to transfer you over to a different department who will be able to assist you better with this, especially when it comes to legal being uh, a legal status as far as the cops being involved, 911, anything like that. I definitely will have to transfer you over to a specialist who will be able to assist you with this. All right. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to type in my notes just really quick, and then I will get you transferred over. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and just so you know, uh, I will speak to the rep before I transfer you just to kind of give them an idea of what's going on so you don't have to repeat yourself. All right. Well, um, yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So give me just a couple of minutes and I will be right back with you, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much for your patience. I do appreciate it. So I was, oh, you're good. Um, told you had a negative experience at one of our stores. Yes, ma'am. But I also had a lot of positive experiences before that. I want you to know that I'm okay. not trying to sue you or anything of that nature. And I definitely probably should have made a hundred um, commendations before making this call. I, I feel bad that this is the first call that I've ever made to you guys because so many Starbucks employees have been good to me as well as your corporate policies. Gotcha. Okay, well, thank you. I do apologize, but thank you for the positive. That does hear, um, I do like to hear the positive. May I go ahead and verify your first and last name, please? Yes, ma'am. My first name is Sean, S-H-A-W-N. And my last name is Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. So, 
go ahead and give me a, a brief description of what occurred. Or let me know what happened. All right. Um, I'm not really good at brief descriptions. I'm autistic, so I ramble a little bit too much, but I'll try to. That's fine. Take your time. Um, do what you got to do, sir. There was an incident um, a month and a half ago that led to an incident this morning. Um, the incident a month and a half ago was that Miss Gracie, who was the manager at the time, um, it was the night uh -huh. before her last day, um, and I was out of gas. So Maggie, one of the other employees, she wrote me a note saying that it's all right for me to stay in the parking lot for the night. I was also told that um, you guys don't call 911 about... Um, people staying the the night in the parking lot if something happens so um there was a, a lot of employees um that told me that they're not going to call 911 it's fine if i'm back there uh, i know every employee's name at that store by the way um and only two of them have not said that it's it's all right if i stay there for the night or it's all right if i park there or anything of that nature um they all said it's fine if i wanted to stay there for the night it would be all right but i i've been um driving to the walmart i don't stay in the the parking lot of starbucks um okay. but anyway well, like, go ahead did i give you permission that night to stay in the parking lot um her name is maggie maggie Yes, ma'am. And do you know her title? Um, I don't. Is she I, like store manager? Nope, she is just an associate. But I already spoken with the uh, manager, Gracie, um, prior to that. And okay. go, she, was, she was the manager at the time. Um, I was harassed by police illegally that night. Um, and I, I have the, the incident recorded. Um, but this morning... Um, after, you know, the employees, I wanted to make sure there was no uh, comfort issue or anything of that nature. And all of them had expressed that they, they're fine with it, including Christian, um, who uh -huh. uh, this morning, um, I, my phone, I have two of them that are identical. And one of them is a couple hours ahead of the first one. So when I got to Starbucks, it was just a little bit early. I thought that they'd been open for probably about 45 minutes. I was incorrect. Um, uh -huh. But I noticed that there was a light pointing at me, and I turned around, and there's a police cruiser pulling up behind me, and then two more behind it. They told me that there was a 911 call about me staying the night there in the parking lot, which I had not. Um, I have videos from here at the Walmart, um, I, I recently became homeless, so, I mean, this is kind of a, it's not a comfortable experience for me, believe me, um, but anyway, I've been there, so I get it. you're totally good, um, anyway, the, the whole problem was that I had permission from every employee to, to be there overnight uh -huh. if need be and i had literally just been there 20 minutes if that and um uh -huh. so the next thing i know i've got officers at my window uh threatening to break my window drag me out of my vehicle arrest me and tow my vehicle um so i i got a hold of because i'm friends with er almost everybody who works at that store um the employee who called it in didn't call 911 like the officer had said. Um, he had called just the police number. But the, the fact is that I, I was completely surprised by this because it is completely the opposite of um, what it is that I was told by the employees. Um, now, uh -huh. I, I do expect them to, to stick together as well they should, you know, I mean, it, the camaraderie is a very important part of Starbucks and your associates and partners. There's a reason you're called partners. Um, however, my issue is with the fact that the one of the assistant managers, his name is Alex. Um, he didn't give me any sort of warning and he didn't give me any sort of um, acknowledgement or anything of that nature. He just called the police this morning. Now, I've heard um, some anti-homeless sentiment out of this uh, 
man before. And don't get me wrong, he is extremely funny. He's he's a good guy, um, but he doesn't like homeless people. Um, so this uh -huh. morning, having officers threaten to break my window for something that I was told was okay and threatening to arrest me and tow my vehicle, I mean, this is very serious stuff. This is this is literally my house. It's all I own in the world. Um, and I, yeah. if it gets towed, I have no way to get it out. Um, also, uh, I was given a, a piece of paper um, for a, a do not trespass order, which is... You were given that today? I was. Now, I, I had gotten a hold of Priscilla, who is another um, associate there, and she had told me that... Um, on her training videos, which she was doing recently, she had also told me the, the same thing about not calling the police if it's not an emergency and, and so on because of the, the third place rule. Um, so uh -huh. Alex, um, I called him to verify because it, it, I've had the police pull this on me before being a homeless person. Um, and it's very unnerving because it, it's wrong. Um, however, I accused the officers of being liars and a few other things, not like really mean name calling or anything like that, but that was because I, I misunderstood the situation because I was not uh, told about the situation. And as a result, um, I did call Alex because I wanted to verify. And Alex, um, uh -huh. and mind you, I have this incident on video as well the the second incident with the cops this morning um but uh i i called alex and he tried claiming that i had been told numerous times by a few of the employees including christian who was one of the ones who was very much um a supporter of you know if, if i need to stay the night staying the night and i didn't stay the night so that you know, was a, a very major issue. Um, when I pulled in this morning, there were two vehicles there that both belonged to employees. So I had assumed that they were open already, but I wasn't ready to go in quite yet. Um, I was uh -huh. making a telephone call. Uh, so that's what I was doing when the police showed up. And as far as that goes, I mean, getting handed um, an order for trespassing you know, is only a, a minor part of that. It's also the fact that I, I had to call up the police department and apologize to the, I didn't have to, um, but I, I feel that that's the right thing to do. So I called up the sheriff's or the police department and I apologized to all three of the officers who showed up this morning for calling them liars and for basically for uh, exercising my rights as a human being as if there were no 911 call or as if there were no police call because almost all of the employees had told me the opposite. Um, but Alex did not, did not have the, the common decency to come out and talk to me about it or ask me nicely or anything like that. He was making claims like, he said that I, I had been told previously that if there's no employee cars there, that I'm not to be there. I left last night while there were still employee vehicles in the parking lot. I showed up this morning to two employee vehicles in the parking lot, and two more showed up um, while I was there on the phone. So it, it's not like, even if they had said those things, which they had not, even if they had said those things, because of the scenario, um, I, I honestly thought that they were open. So, basically, this employee, Alex, um, he just doesn't like homeless people. And I don't know if there's any further issues or any sort of deep-seated resentment or any sort of trauma. That's not my business. It's the fact that they were going to smash my window and arrest me and take all of my things. This is all of my worldly possessions. Um, as far as the trespassing goes, I mean, I, I I don't feel like fighting it, but if you guys are 
fine with me going back to the store and giving me permission. That's cool, but I'm still not going to go back. Not to that store anyway. Um, uh-huh. I, I would like for that Who to be... Who were you given the trespassing information from? Do what? Who were you given the trespassing paper from? Was it from the police that arrived today? Yes, ma'am. And, and that was part of the issue. Like, I, I really thought that these officers were lying because of what the other partners at Starbucks had said. I was fairly certain that Priscilla was working this gotcha. morning, but I wasn't for certain. Um, and that's why I uh, called the store to, to make sure. Rebecca was working this morning. Um, she doesn't really seem to like homeless people, but she's not anti-homeless people. And she she doesn't come across as anti-homeless, and she is still courteous. She is still professional. She is still... She's still a good employee. Um, uh-huh. But the the whole issue is in, entirely with Alex. I don't know what the issue is beyond that, but I do know that he outright lied to me and he outright lied to the police. And he also uh, put words into Christian's mouth, which I believe that's probably one of the worst sins you can commit to speak for another human being. Um, yeah, I understand. I do apologize for the experience. What I could offer is for you to speak with the district manager because, like, you did say something about being banned and about being allowed back in. I can I tell you that that would be up to the district manager to let you know that kind of information. Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't feel comfortable at that Starbucks because Alex works there, so I'm not going to be going back okay. to it. And as far as being reallowed there, I'm. I'm not interested in that. It, it would be nice if the whole trespassing thing would be not on my record. I mean, I'm I'm having a hard enough yeah. time as is, and I was not given any forewarning. And I mean, this is this is a a, a major downer for me. I I've always been courteous to the Starbucks employees. I've always been forthright. I. I at the Starbucks on Pearl Street in Boulder, Colorado, um, they had some problems with, uh, they had to kick homeless people out who were drunk and belligerent, and I was basically their go-to guy for that, and when two of those uh-huh. homeless people threatened to stab one of the employees uh, to death while he was taking out the garbage, I literally went out with them every time that they took the garbage out for seven years. Um, You can verify Uh this with um, an employee named Roberta Richards. Um, You can also verify it with a former employee named Neil DiMuccio. Um, There are probably 30 employees that work there that you could verify it with, as well as past and uh, probably current employees, too. I haven't been there in about a year. But, I mean, I've always been... uh, a big supporter of you guys and your corporate um, policies because of how you treat individuals such as myself. And I wasn't always homeless. Uh I mean, when I was there before, I worked at the Cheesecake Factory. I worked at Stone Lighting. I've always been a worker. Um, This is... I just don't want this stuff on my record. It shouldn't be there. I should have been at least warned or forewarned or you know that this is this is not an acceptable way to treat homeless people if you wouldn't treat somebody in a house this way it shouldn't be okay to treat a homeless person this way and this kind of stuff i i really do um i want it not on my record that's basically it i i want alex reprimanded for the way that he treated me this morning and even if the other employees are with him or against him, I don't want him fired. I just want him reprimanded. Okay, well, I, like I said, I definitely do apologize for the experience I was had. I would have to have the district manager speak with you regarding that because I have no authority of that. So uh, what I'm doing is offering, um, I'm taking documentation, so I'm going to have the district manager follow up with you. What time would you say this incident occurred this morning again? Um, it occurred at probably about 4.45 or so. Okay. So it's about 
4.40, 4.45, about 20 minutes before they opened. All right, I'm submitting that district manager follow-up. It does take usually two to three business days to hear back from the district manager. All right. What is a good phone number for them to reach you at, sir? Um, it is... 308. All right, and then do you have a piece of paper handy so I can provide you a reference number? Um, let me grab a pen real quick and a notepad, and I'll write it down. It is hot here in Cheyenne. I hope you're not anywhere near here. The Midwest is boiling. <laughs> we're boiling down here in New Mexico, too. It was 97 oh degrees God. yesterday, and they said we're supposed to get even hotter today. I am so sorry about that. You guys get some <laughs> real heat. All right, I got I got a pen handy. Go ahead. That reference number is going to be 190. Oh, man, this pen isn't 630. working. 630. Oh, Sorry about that. I, I was hoping it was working. Okay. Um, now I feel rude and inconsiderate for wasting your time. Oh, no, you're good. Huh. All right, it's... 190. Oh, 190? Mm-hmm. 630. 630. Dash 003. Dash 003. 220. 220. 220. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. And that's, your, that's going to be your incident number. So if... By chance, the district manager doesn't call you back in within two to three business days. I'd say probably Wednesday or Thursday is the latest. Go ahead and give us a call back. Let us know so we can see if we have to escalate this even higher to, like, a district manager. Or, I mean, a regional manager. Oh, I didn't even get the store number. I'm so sorry. That's weird. I thought I did. What location did this happen at? Do you have the store number by chance or the store address? I do have the store address. It's... Okay, what's the store? Two one 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 mm-hmm. Central. Okay. Cheyenne, Wyoming. And you said okay. uh, there we go. Okay, I do got that store link now. So the district manager, like I said, they'd already talked to you by Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. Go ahead and give us a call back provide that reference number and we'll see if they've been if they've left any notes or if we have to get this escalated even higher all right and another thing um i'm not going to be in the area by then i'm going to be hopefully in montana so um it's not like i'm going to go back to the store i don't have any interest in going Uh back to the store and i would like a note of that to be made i just want the trespassing thing off Okay, I do put in the note that you didn't feel comfortable going back to that shore due to the part of the incident with the partner. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. You can calling care about. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? You're welcome. My name is Melody. Melody? Thank you, Melody. Yes. You've been a big help. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You have a great rest of the day. I certainly will. Be safe. Thank you. You as well. That right there, if only the police were that kind. Um, There is absolutely no need for these kind of shenanigans. If you're going to make the rules and then change the rules and make the rules and change the rules and make the rules and change the rules, I'm just not going to go there. I'm not. If you're not going to inform me of a rule change after you've already informed me that it's fine... And if you're going to falsify um, a police report, then there is a major issue with that. That is illegal. And the fact that the man lied outright is also illegal. Um, Although that very first time 
about a month and a half ago, um, there was some commotion and, and talking about it because people at the store didn't quite know what the laws are in the area. But when they looked up the Starbucks policies, um, and also when they did their training videos and so on and so forth, like, yeah, there were a lot of employees who were completely fine with it. Um, the two that we're working today um, are two of the three that come across as anti-homeless, but only one of them had actually made anti-homeless statements, and that was Alex. Um, Rebecca, always, always courteous. Um, her body language tells me something different, but at the same time, I'm not 100% right. Are you? Yeah, you don't look like Jesus, that's for sure. <laughs> so, uh... I didn't have a panic attack making that phone call. I felt completely comfortable making that phone call. I didn't feel as if they would give me any issues whatsoever, and, and they didn't. Um, as far as the police goes, it's a different scenario altogether, because so many officers that I have known have pulled shady stuff. When I was in a house, they didn't pull this stuff. When I was homeless, they certainly did. And uh, that's something to do that I have to say about racism as well, is that as a homeless person with a backpack, I was targeted often. When I got a vehicle, I was able to put my backpack in my vehicle, put on clean clothes, and be treated like a human being. Um... Whereas a black man can't take his skin off and put it in the trunk of his car. He's going to be targeted no matter what. And that depends on who, what, when, where, and why. But at the same time, like I said, I can take off my backpack. A black man can't take off his skin. Um... People do a lot of mean things when they hate the homeless. If you're a homeless person walking down the street, people will randomly call you in as a suspicious person. And I was dealing with an officer last week who thought I was a suspicious person. He approached me and spoke to me in the Starbucks parking lot midday um, or thereabouts. And he said that I met the description of somebody who was a couple of blocks away and he wanted to run my ID and a bunch of other stuff. I was like, dude, I've been in Starbucks all day. My computer is in the Starbucks. If you want to verify this, walk into the Starbucks with me. He bugged me for about 10 minutes, but he finally gave up after getting my first name and me explaining to him that if he's got an issue with that, he can walk into the Starbucks with me. Um, the officers this morning, I, they were just doing their jobs, you know? I mean, I, I felt as if, because of the previous experience, and because of what the other employees had said, that me being there just a few minutes early was completely fine. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm homeless. I mean, shit, what do you have to say about that? And I'm not terribly homeless. When it rains, I got this. And it did rain last night. Um, when I need to move on, I can drive on. So, that's important to note as well. Um, that Miss Melody lady, um, I'm going to make a call probably in a bit to say thank you for her. And I, I realized when I was making that call that I had never made a phone call to say how wonderful Miss Bobby was. I'd A couple of times with Miss Bobby, I had made um, reports uh, as far as over the internet goes, and she's not the only one. Um, I had help with that. My friend Sam, the one who went crazy, uh, before he went crazy, he literally helped me with that, because Miss Bobby is a badass. She is totally cool. 
Um, we filled one out for Miss, well, actually, I think we filled out two or three of them for Miss Bobby, because she just, she's great. And then there's a guy named Tom, and we made some for him. Uh, I think I made one, and uh, Sam made one. Um, any time that they step above and beyond. But I, I think I'm probably going to make... I got a lot of employees to be thankful for at Starbucks. That's not a joke. Um, so I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to do that. Be safe. Be honest and forthright. Um... I'm probably not the right guy to be saying that because I literally threatened to kill the president and I'm not willing to kill anybody. So, there is that. Um, that is so bugging me. <laughs> OCD is all shit. Um... Yeah, one shitty employee who, he's not even a shitty employee, he's a great employee, he really is, I mean, he serves the drinks, he, he makes jokes, he's funny, he's also a very assertive personality, a very domineering personality, um, there's also some other personal things that I know about him that aren't my business to share with you on the internet. So, be safe, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and, well, if you guys want to comment down below, even if you're assholes, I will answer the best that I can, as honestly as I can, and if you feel I owe you an apology, um, go ahead and type that down below as well.